This is Rue. He is a seven-week-old baby red squirrel, and his mum lived in the old forests of northern Sweden. When she was hit by a car, Rue forced himself out of the dray, falling 15 metres out of a tree. He was injured and close to death. After we rescued him and nurtured him to health, he slowly learnt to be a squirrel. In this episode, Rue has grown into a bundle of chaos. He still sleeps in my hoodie, but he's definitely seeking life in the wild. We need to build his enclosure as quickly as possible for the next stage of his journey to the wild. Thank you MPB for sponsoring this video. Rue is a little teenager now, a bundle of energy and total chaos. Rue's daily chaotic activities include running around, peeing on the window ledge, Whoa. destroying sticks on my desk, and making a total mess. Chewing things, and of course, play fighting. Rue loves play fighting, and excitingly, he has developed enough that he can hold small objects. But his balance isn't very good yet. Rue makes a total mess every morning. And after four hours of chaos, I'm so happy when he's finally asleep. We just got back from the shops and it was the first time that we've left Rue and we were gone for eight hours. I left food and water and he was absolutely fine. Juan's feeding him. How is he? He's asleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's asleep. And we actually bought all the materials to build him his outdoor enclosure. So hopefully in the next couple of days he can hear birds, feel wind and just be outside for the very first time. He might not sleep there, maybe not for a few nights, but he can at least go outside, finally. Something I love about summer in Sweden is the amount of light. It's 10.30, the sun has just set, Rue is in bed, and we're about to start working on his outdoor enclosure. Now that Rue is eating on his own, the next stage to his rehabilitation is a release enclosure. Although releasing him to the wild is many weeks away, it's important he gets used to being outside. A successful release to the wild will take time and patience. He's still very much a baby and just learning to be a squirrel.
I've spent the past two weeks researching and speaking to many squirrel rehabilitators in Sweden, UK and Germany about release enclosures. We're making a two and a half squared meter cage with strong metal wiring that will go on the inside of the enclosure, just in case Rue starts chewing on the wood. The enclosure won't have a roof so he can feel rain and sunlight. He will also have various branches and trees inside to help prepare him for jumping in the wild. Yeah, we should have got him. This morning, Rue was absolute chaos. He is so active, running up and down the stairs, up and down curtains, and I think we're a bit desperate to get this enclosure done. So today we're going to build the frames. So, there we go. That's good, that's good. And add the wire mesh, and hopefully by tomorrow he can go in there. We won't have trees in there and other activities, but he can be outside. I'm sure he will love it compared to being in the house. And I think he's ready, which is the important thing. Just a few days ago, Rue was still learning to run, but he's finally found his running legs. Although Rue was now a confident runner, he hasn't quite got the hang of the slippery floor. I had such an intense morning with Rue. He was awake for four hours, super hyper, running up the stairs, climbing up the curtains. And he's definitely acting more like a squirrel, which is good. But there's been a few moments where he goes to the window and just stops and watches outside. And it makes me feel so conflicted. The past four years, I've been watching red squirrels in the wild, in this forest, in extreme conditions. And to have one in my house just feels cruel. I know I may never have this opportunity again to share my space with a red squirrel, but it doesn't feel right. And I'm excited for him to be in the forest one day. I've had quite a few questions of how I filmed this series and the truth is I filmed a lot of it on my own. I had my Canon R5 
on a tripod and some of the lenses I used were from MPB and I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video. MPB is the largest global platform to buy, sell and trade used photography kit and this week I'm selling this lens the 24 to 105 and this Canon EF 100 to 400 and I'm going to show you how you can make some money with your used photography kit. Hello you want to find out as well? So head to mpb.com and click sell trade. You then type the equipment you want to sell and you get an instant quote. It really is that simple and easy. I'm going to package the two lenses up, send them off. If you have any used photography equipment you want to sell, maybe you want to buy a used lens or camera, head over to mpb.com and thank you MPB for sponsoring this video. Rue is now seven weeks old and he's grown so much. He's been living with me for almost two weeks now. You pleased with yourself? Our current routine starts at 7 a.m. You want a snack whilst you're up there? With climbing the curtains. Careful. Rue likes to climb to the highest place, so the curtains are his favorite spot. And where's your nut? You dropped it? With his endless energy, eating is the last thing on Rue's mind. So if he isn't interested in milk or nuts, I usually give him a piece of cracker to encourage some hunger. Crackers are a total junk food for squirrels, so it was just an incentive to get him eating fruit and nuts. Rue is easily distracted. But the good news is that he's finally drinking milk on his own. I try to provide as much enrichment as possible. And I even brought in a three meter long tree into the house. He's getting much better at climbing, but sadly, after an hour, the tree was boring. I spend the whole morning supervising his chaos and I don't get much free time when he's awake. But we're happy to do things together. Excitingly, Rue has started caching, which is when squirrels store food. It's an important instinctive behavior that helps them survive winter. But he's not very good at it yet. After many hours of running, Rue is usually quite sleepy by late morning. He always fights his tiredness because sleeping is boring when you have sticks to destroy. Mother squirrels will lick their kits in the dray before bedtime and stroking Rue helps calm him. And always, eventually, he falls asleep.
With 24 hours of daylight, summer feels endless. In the mornings, we prioritize on feeding and stimulating Rue until he's ready to sleep the entire afternoon. The enclosure is forming shape. We are two hours south of the Arctic Circle, so summers explode with life and greens. This morning, Rue was climbing a curtain, and it's not the kitchen curtains, which he has a good grip with, but it was the curtains in our bedroom, and he fell from about 50 centimeters, 60 centimeters, and he seemed to fall onto his nose, and it didn't seem like a big fall, but when I picked him up, his nose was bleeding and he was quite startled and he climbed onto my shoulder and we tried to comfort him but he was quite sorry for himself. He wanted to go back to bed so I put him back in my hoodie and now he seems fine but whatever happened to him that first day he left the dray, he must have damaged his nose because he was bleeding a lot from a tiny fall and he's fallen from greater heights. He fell from a desk a few days ago, completely fine. He was running around. So we just need to be really careful with him because he is still very small and fragile. <laughs>
it is beautiful and absolutely adorable watching a baby squirrel grow up. You're biting me. I do feel a discomfort that this wild animal is so close to people. The more time Rue spends with us, the less likely he will survive as a wild animal. Of all the baby squirrels in the dray, only Rue survived three days without his mother. He's already a fighter. And from watching him develop, I can see how much he enjoys playing, being tickled and destroying things. Rue is happy to be alive. But a house is no home for a wild animal and it's so important we prepare him for life in the wild. It's not as simple as just opening the door and letting him be free. The next stage is careful rehabilitation and rewilding. It might take some time, but I'm confident he will make it. In the next episode, Rue spends his last couple of days in the house. You're not running, you're drinking milk, come on. I'm sorry, look. Keep going, keep Rue. I'm not chasing you, he's on that. We were building as quick as possible. Cage. <laughs> yeah. And finally, come on. <laughs> Rue goes outside for the first time in a month. Yay! <laughs> Have you had enough? <laughs> Why are you trying to get out? <laughs> this is your new home. You have to go outside. But Rue tries to work out how to get back in the house. This is your home. Eventually, he does start to like the outside world.